Hello and welcome back to CCTV, episode number 50, 52. 52. 52. This podcast is also known as the White Guys Podcast. I'm not um, white. Just two white guys talking about what's going on, our opinions on Am stuff. Am I classified I, as white? Dude, just let me do one, just let me do one intro in my life. Sorry, here. I'm so used to like when we're on the couch. Okay, well we're on a couch right now actually. In fact, we're in this nice uh, suburban uh, Glendale, residential neighborhood that uh, I just picked up on Pier Space. Mm -hmm. um, but we're the only ones here. I mean, we got Lindsay, Matt, we got Tony here in the background. Yeah, there's three of us in the uh, back here. But uh, otherwise, you know, Brett, he's in Japan because he doesn't want to live in America anymore. James, uh, you know, he's got those medical complications, so he just can't, he just can't even leave his house. He has to live in a bubble. His leg is gone. He's like in this airtight bubble. It's Actually, I shouldn't meme, I shouldn't meme. That's the whole thing with the podcast is you can't meme. But yeah, you, you and I are both here. We are both here. And we got some we got some hot topics. We got some hot topics. We don't to really have any hot topics. The most though. interesting topics. We we talked about it on the way here. What we're gonna talk about. Most right. of these podcasts aren't really pre-planned, which is maybe to our detriment. But no, dude, because we just it's like improv, dude. You feel it's like just let it all out of your chest and. It get doesn't feel like out. improv. It's like um like an exorcism for the soul. This podcast is. I like that. Yeah? I like that. But first, let's talk about our uh, sponsors today. We got Honey. You guys know about Honey? Let me tell you about Honey real quick, Honey. Millions of top rated sellers offering the exact same products on Amazon. Finding the best deal feels like you're looking for an invisible needle in the world's biggest haystack. Am I right? Yes. But thanks to Honey, the free browser extension, I always get the best price on Amazon without lifting a finger. Honey automatically goes to work whenever I shop on Amazon. It compares the prices of every seller that carries the item I want. Honey even factors in shipping, sales tax, and Amazon Prime status to make sure I'm getting the lowest total price. That is the lowest total price you can get with a free extension, by the way. It shows me the best deal every time, even if Amazon doesn't. It's like having my very own personal shopping assistant. Honestly, Honey is so easy to use, it feels like cheating, but it's not. It's just a smart, automated deal finder that gets me and millions of shoppers the best price on Amazon every single time. So yeah, Honey's been sponsoring multiple CCTVs. I think it's even sponsored a few videos of ours. They're a great supporter and also their product, I guess the, the extension is bomb. We actually use it for Amazon all the time. Every single time I find something stupid uh, to use in like a test video, the extension always pops up. So it says what the best deal is, if it's the best deal at the time or if it wants me to wait until it finds a better deal. I, it's great, dude, it's, it's great. I've used Honey for a long time. Like I've actually, I use it before, we're, being a part of this. Mm -hmm. for, I don't know how long they've been around for a couple of years now, maybe something like that. I've been using it for a long time. It's great. You go on like top 10 uh, extensions you can add to Chrome. It's usually up there. It's usually like number one. It's very simple, save money. That's all there is to it. That's right, more than 10 million people are using Honey to save money. Honey has over 100,000 five-star reviews on the Google Chrome store alone. And Time Magazine says it's basically free money, Honey. I added that part in, I added the honey part in. So next time you're shopping on Amazon, don't wonder whether you found the best deal, just add honey and get the best price automatically. Add honey for free at joinhoney.com slash CCTV. That's joinhoney.com slash CCTV. Honey, the smart shopping assistant that helps you save time and money. And that's right, thank you honey for keeping us alive in this uh, economic climate, this crisis. Is it bad? Ah, uh, could have been worse. Could have been like the, the stock market crash of 2008. Did you ever see that? The, um, I did see that. The, the big, the, what was it called? The big drop? The great, the big short? The big short. There the movie? Go. Yeah. It's a great movie. That's a great movie. A great Steve movie. Carell, Ryan Gosling, Christian yeah. Bale. He made another movie recently, didn't he? Yeah, that he That director? Did. Yes, that exact direct. I don't, although I don't think that one did. It didn't do too well though. It didn't do too I well. heard it didn't do too well. Um, you know what also didn't do too well? The Oscars. Have you watched the Oscars? I watched snippets of it. Okay. I've started like, I lose interest in a lot of those big award shows nowadays. Okay. I, I just, I, I have no time to watch them. Well, you know, us as millennials, cause I'm like right around your age. We just, we just, well, I'm we a different generation about, than you We just care you, about though. finer things. Do we care about like the shorties? Like what's the meme of the year? Do you care about the shorties? No, I don't care about the, I don't care about the shorties. 
You are a different generation than me, though. I'm not. The, what do you? What does that mean? Do you even know what generation? you I are? do know what generation. Are you a mean. Zoomer? I am a Zoomer. Technically, You're a zoomer? Yeah. technically no, I, yeah. I, I'm a millennial. You still. are a millennial. I'm You're still a millennial. Like smack dab in the middle of it, or no, not the middle of it. I think it's like Generation Y as well, Is or it, something like that. Uh, there's like a bunch of different names. What's the it. cap of age right now for for millennials? You want me to look this up? It's yeah. like it's got to be thirty something at this point. Lindsay, are you a millennial? You're a millennial. Okay. I'm pretty much right in right before the middle of Generation Z, I believe. <laughs> uh, 1981 to 1996 is millennials, right? Okay. Baby boomers is 1946, 1964. And I guess post millennials is another word for your generation, which is 97 to present. I don't like post-millennial. You don't like post-millennial? I don't like having millennial attached to my generation. I think we're our own thing. There's, no. a, there's a lot of generations. Post-millennial members would have been 10 when the iPhone was introduced, whereas many millennials will still have memories of landlines, touchstones, and rotary phones. I have memories of that. You don't have memories little. of it. You wouldn't, of landlines? No, of, of rotary phones? No, I don't know what that is. You don't use a... Oh, no. <laughs> what? I feel like those are way older though. When did those go out of commission? See, this is what I'm talking about, dude. This is a generational <laughs> gap here. Is that extreme is generation? That actually the whole extreme? point of this was the Oscars, right? So you're sorry, like, sorry. So I'm go saying, uh, Hey, anybody that's part of Generation Z, type in uh, I'm a Zoomer in the comments. Okay, I'm sure there's gonna be some people zooming away <laughs> right now. Uh, I didn't watch it. I, I started to watch, I watched some parody streams of them watching it and taking a shot. What is whenever, a parody stream? Just like a, a, like a live stream that is like kind of making fun of it a little bit where it's like, uh -huh. oh, take a shot whenever they talk about this or that or whenever they bring up like this topic or they talk about like Trump's wall or something like that. Because that to me seems like they, they sort of do that just about every single award ceremony that's out in Hollywood. That's part of the reason I stopped watching too. It's just too political. Yeah. I just don't... I, have no interest in it. Like politics is such a big part of everyday life now that you see it anywhere you go that I don't need to force myself to be involved with it through just like what's supposed to be entertainment. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like if I wanted to watch an award show, when you, when you watch movies, you watch movies to get away from everyday life more or less. That's at least that's my philosophy. Like when if I watch a movie, I, I usually like it. I like it better if it helps me get away from thinking about you know, just like daily problems or whatever. But so if, if you have a show devoted to that, I feel like I, I get the side where people say like, well, they have a platform, so they should talk about these issues, but you're also alienating such a big part of your audience that may disagree with you. You know what I mean? I just, I, I just, I just, I don't like it. <laughs> it's just not you, my thing. You don't like it. Yeah, me personally. Would you watch the Oscars otherwise? Uh, yeah, if, if they didn't make it so political, but there is no way to combat that, really. And, um, I was watching, I watched this clip of uh, Marlon Brando um, when, he was, when he was supposed to accept the Oscar for The Godfather. It wasn't actually him, but he sent uh, a Native American woman to accept the, the award for him. Mm -hmm. And then she talked about, well, she was, she was going to talk about the issues that they were facing during that time period. Um, so that was kind of political. And yeah. That was back, you know. Back I think it's... It's just too subjective. Like you, whatever may be important to somebody up on stage may not be important to you. And more than often, at least in my experience, the stuff that they've talked about didn't really resonate with me. So I just never really stuck around with it, I guess. I think there's people that have your opinion on that specifically, but mm -hmm. also I feel like you're young enough, speaking of Generation Z, where they should listen to the younger generation's opinion more so just to hold just, the race. But that's also yeah. with other big shows as well. Sure. Like with the NFL and things like this. Yeah. Because they course. want the younger audience, right? That's the whole point. I think people, I think often it seems like people from my generation are still disregarded as being too young when we're already starting to get into our 20s, mid 20s even. And it's like, we're, we're, we're <laughs> mid 20s. Think, dude, like generation Z. Long time ago for me, mid 20s. Yeah. What? You're like, you're, how old are you? I don't want to talk yeah, about look that. It up. I don't want to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> you're going to look up your wiki page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that it seems like, um, it seems like a lot of entertainment nowadays is still pandering to millennials and to that age demographic. But I feel like people are disregarding generation Z as still being too young. But the reality is like, we're already, a lot of us are getting into the mid twenties, something like that. 
and a lot of us are getting out of high school already. What does that mean? What does that mean? Like, you're, are you, a lot of you are getting into mid twenties. What else? Does, what do you mean? Like, what? I think the, is, be- is, so that, the beginning. Is that the whole point is that you're getting into mid twenties? So I think now that, it's like. I think. So stop disregarding our opinions. We're getting in our mid twenties. We're we're we can vote now. Most a lot of us can vote now. Ninety seven. You could have voted two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. F- like five years ago, there would only be a very small percentage of Gen Z that could vote. But now it's a lot. Um, I think I think the current election probably speaks on that as well. I think probably since we've had the most uh, people, we had a huge turnout for the 2016 election. Oh, yeah. And an even record breaking midterm for people. 2020 is going to be interesting for sure. Uh, Gen Z, I think, is reported to be the most conservative generation since like. I think the boomers, something yeah, well, like I that. Guess, I guess we'll have to see, dude. I, you so. know, listen, I'm not trying to get into. I'm not trying to get into. Yeah, I don't want to get super deep. I'm not trying to get into all that. Right? I'm just, yeah, hey, I'm listen, just, I just came here to chill. I, I just, just came here to chill, dude. I think you're. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I think it's no. interesting. I, I think that. I think that Generation Z. Sh- we're gonna. I think within the coming years, with entertainment specifically, they're gonna start. There will be some sort of influence in entertainment for sure, depending on how generation, how people react to Generation Z, and now that we're all you know, getting older for sure and have more of a prominent say in public opinion, you know? Really, I just wanted to talk about uh, Bradley Cooper. <laughs> Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga's moment at the Oscars. That, that was really the yeah. whole reason I brought cut it up. Cut that, that whole was section the, out. That was the only thing that I actually had saw was them perform, uh, was it Shallow together from that from the movie that they did, uh, uh, A Star is Born, Star right? Star is Born, yeah. Didn't watch the movie. <laughs> I didn't watch the movie. I didn't watch, but I, I heard the songs. I heard some of the songs before. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. Like the, the, obviously, the very talented uh, singing Lady Gaga and, and Brad. Did a, a good job, but um, the right. the performance, the performance was very caught a lot of people's attention. Did you watch it at all? Uh, no, I haven't seen it. Okay, there there was a, there was a few memes out of it. Uh, maybe we can pull them up, pull them up on screen. <laughs> it sounds like wrong side of YouTube right now. Does it? A little bit. Well, <laughs> well, it's not because I'm well, I'm not going to play you the video basically. Sure. But here I'm just showing this to you. I can sh- I can send this over later. But. Uh, <laughs> There's this moment where uh, young Brad sat next to Lady Gaga. Okay. And it was like towards the end of the song. They, she was playing the piano and he sat next to her. And they were doing like this very like solemn, like intimate look into each other's eyes. And they like put their like faces up against each other to like sing the last part of the song. Dang, he looks old. He looks old. He's got this. wrinkles and everything now too. Um, so people were, were memeing on this a little bit because... Uh- why? Well, Brad has a wife. He has a child with a said That wife. was going to be my question. Uh, Lady Gaga recently broke up with some her fiance. I think she mm-hmm. broke off the engagement like a, a week or so prior to all this. And like there's footage of them sitting together, but uh, uh, Bradley Cooper's wife is in the middle of them. Oh. So it's like people were like, oh, like you damn well know she was. Yeah. You know? But she, her his wife has come out and said like, no, she has no problem with it. You know, like she understands this whole art and whatever uh-huh. like that. But people watch the performance were like, this is art meets life. And they're actually like really being intimate with each other on stage. So some people were like, you know, shipping them and. Uh, yeah, shipping was, them. Yeah. Like together. Yeah, like, yeah no, I, get uh, I know it's shipping. Lady Gaga yeah. and, and Bradley Cooper. That's very strange. That's really bizarre. Is well, it? In the, what, I never watched the movie, but... I, you but didn't they were lovers it. in the movie. Were they? Okay, yeah. I was going to ask. If so that's why they were okay. They were using the... We're just, we're just method acting, you know what it's I mean? It's just theater. What? They're, yeah. What, it's just they theater? Can, yeah. The, the, whole, the whole award ceremony is for actors and for the entertainment industry. Why is it weird that two of them are getting cuddly on stage? Just acting. You know? I guess, but it'd be like if if Leonardo had ever won Oscar for the Titanic uh-huh. and they like recreated like that, you know. Scene. I guess, yeah. I guess if it was pretense by you know saying that if if it seemed like they were, were trying to like you know be in character or something, then okay. But mm-hmm. yeah, that is kind of strange. That was strange. That is kind of strange. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're you're having second I'm, thoughts. I'm still digesting. You, the want me, you want me to show it to you again? Yeah, I do. I do <laughs> kind of want to see that. You want me to show it to you? Okay. <laughs> like, that looked. Uh, look, look, look how look how close that is, dude. Like the it, thing it, is, if they were just acting, that's really convincing. That's so that's really good. Acting. That does speak to their talents. Yeah. But people are like, they have a very deep connection with each other. It's obviously a deep friendship. Yeah, I mean, but you have to though. You do have to. If you go through a movie, if you if you play lovers in a movie. Okay. Like if you and I played lovers in a movie. I, I didn't think this was gonna go in that direction. We would have a deeper bond after that movie. 
Okay. You know what I mean? So sure. it's not it's not unheard of, I'm sure. It's just uh, Yeah, no, I mean I, I can see why people would react that way, but Yeah. It's just actors. You go to high school and you go to theater class, you uh-huh. should see some of those theater kids, man. Those theater kids outside I, I was in a theater class when I first came into college. Okay. And I never got super deep into it. I only took the one class. But I got invited to a party with them at one point. Um, and I went to this party. And these theater kids, they're just like, they're just friends. None of them are dating, none of them are anything. And we're hanging out at one of their houses or whatever. And they're getting, we're in a hot tub. And they're getting real cuddly. I mean, real cuddly. Even the guys. I don't, I don't know, like, I don't know. It's I, just, I, don't know I don't know where you went to school, dude. I don't think I ever... I don't know what to say. I didn't get involved with it. I was just, I was observing and I just noticed that. I guess like in that profession, people are just a lot, they have- profession. I don't think being a, a theater kid in college I don't know. is a it's just, I feel like there's se. less boundaries when you're- when I think you're, it's just college. When, maybe. But when you're expected to be on stage with somebody and have to go through these sort of intimate scenarios, they do form kind of a different bond. You're just a little bit more open. I, mean, I guess for some people, they, they're just more boundaries or less boundaries than, than others. I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay. I think it's just actors. <laughs> do you want to see them together? Do I want to see them together? I don't yeah. care if they're together. Whatever makes them happy makes them happy. It doesn't change my life. Okay. Do you want to see them together? Uh, I kind of feel bad for his wife if they get together. Yeah, that's that wouldn't of, be very, that's, not, and, a, that's and his, not a good look. And his child, by the way, but that's, other than that, oh, it's, like, eh, it's like, whatever, you know. It, you, you've had you've had Brad Jelena, you know what I mean? Yeah. You've had, I'm trying to think of Tiger Woods and his um, wife, but that didn't go over too There's long. definitely... Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Um, there are then, real relationships that form out of those, though, for sure. <laughs> like Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield. That's another one. Emma Stone, huh? Are they still I, together? How's she doing, by the way? How's she doing? Yeah. I don't know. I wanted to take acting classes a couple of years ago, actually, from a place that okay, I used to so go to. Do you have any? Do you have any scenes prepped? No, no. How are you, you going to convince that. me that you've ever? Oh, so you're not going to do it anymore? Acting? Yeah. I act every day of my life. Okay. Did you see the Nintendo on Nintendo News? Did you see the new Pokemon Detective trailer? De- Detective Pikachu, Pikachu? Detective, sorry, Detective Pikachu. I don't know why my brain got scrambled for a minute. Was that the big Nintendo news? I thought the big Nintendo news was that the... Listen, uh, I'm following up to the big okay, Nintendo okay, news. Sorry, there's sorry. a new trailer, though. I guess go check it out. I don't know. There's like Mewtwo in it, and he looks really fucking janky. Have you, I didn't see okay. it. I saw Dude, the old trailer. This is like this is like me trying to like update you. How do I know more about like current events than you do? And you just fucking sit at home eating potato chips and like watching YouTube. How do you know what to do at home? What do you do at home? Not a whole lot, truly, actually. I don't know. I did, I, I saw the old trailer where they had the- um, Mr. Mime and- Mr. Mime, yeah, that shit was creepy as hell. It had like dodgeballs for shoulders and stuff. <laughs> okay, here's a, oh, sorry, I have to connect to this uh, house's Wi-Fi. <laughs> do, do you see that? <laughs> That's uh, that's full 3D Mewtwo. What's wrong with that? What do you mean? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with it? It looks kind of accurate. It looks accurate. Oh, well, I'm just saying, dude. It's, it, they just revealed him in the second trailer. Oh, okay. So that's that's his skinned, you know, body in the flesh. Yeah, it is kind of weird. When I saw the first Detective Pikachu movie, I was really kind of creeped out. I think the 3D makes it like. Yeah, photorealistic Pokemon's kind of gross. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> nasty looking. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm. I'm definitely gonna go see it. Like, there's yeah. no way I'm not gonna go see it. I think it'll be pretty funny, actually. I'm hoping it. I'm hoping they understand that the people that grew up with Pokemon mm-hmm. are were like young as hell at the time, and now they're older. There and was so a if big, they want to throw sorry, in. Sorry. No. Uh, if they want to throw in more like, because they especially if they're using like first gen stuff, mm-hmm. like if they want to now throw in like boomer humor. Like I, what's I, boomer humor? I don't know, just like just like inappropriate jokes of you know like like maybe Pokemon like getting it on or something like boomer that. You know? Like Mr. Mom getting a little handsy with like Ash's mom stuff like that. You know what I mean? Just okay. like just, just throw some stuff in there, dude. Okay. I, I'd be I'd be you know sipping my uh, Corona or whatever and just probably having a good time in the theater. Yeah, you can't the bring theater. alcohol into the theater. There's something other where you can do that. 
Really? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like the, the like the Chinese theater. Like oh, they, they get a big Hollywood? bar section. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, I was gonna say something. Shit. Pokemon. You're growing up with Pokemon. 3D, photorealistic. I lost my train of thought. I had something that I was gonna say. I had something I was gonna say and I lost it. I lost it. Bo- yeah. Boomer humor. No, no, it was before Beamer, Boomer Humor. It was before Boomer Humor. Boomer Humor. humor. Boomer Humor. Boomer hu- Sorry, I was like having a hard time enunciating. Things that. you'd want to see in the Pokemon movie? Um, I, oh, yeah, sorry. There, so there was, a, there was a big petition before to get Danny DeVito to voice Pikachu. And I, I was really hyped for that. Okay. When I heard Ryan Reynolds' voice as Pikachu, I was really unnerved. It just doesn't... It's <laughs> like, like one of those things where hey, the voice... Hey, you can hear me? The voice, I feel like the voice doesn't match the face. You, you feel that way? Yeah. I, when, I, like, I like the way Pikachu looks. I like the way the movie looks. But when I hear Ryan Reynolds speak, I want to blow my brains out. Not, not because I don't like Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Because it just, it's really fucking weird to hear Ryan Reynolds' voice on a Pikachu. It's like a fake movie trailer you I see in a movie. I think it'd be more off by Danny DeVito's voice on Pikachu than Ryan Reynolds. I feel like it'd be more fitting. Danny DeVito would be more fitting yeah. for- Yeah, I can see Danny DeVito being like the gruff Pikachu detective versus Ryan Reynolds being like the ditzy kind of- Oh, you're, you're going for the detective aspect. Yeah. Right? Okay, I see. Can you imagine Pikachu with, Ryan, <laughs> with that, Danny DeVito's voice? At, at that point, you could go with, um, uh, with who, who's Hellboy? I always, I always mess up his name. Ron Perlman, yeah. the original one? Ron yeah. Perlman. He would be good too. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Pikachu. Ron Perlman as as Pikachu. I think I, I feel like a Detective Pikachu movie <laughs> with like a more gruff kind of sound in Pikachu. I feel like maybe it's more maybe fitting. maybe that was maybe that was maybe that was a play. It, it, it legit, but also, I don't think it would have been made if Ryan Reynolds didn't like put his name on it. Do you know what I mean? I feel like yeah. I feel like I think Nintendo's taking that. a huge sort of leap of faith by being because like the live action stuff doesn't really. Uh, do too well as is. I mean, the Dragon Ball. Sure. Stuff, yeah. Like know, Dragon example, Ball Evolution. Like they, they understand that field, I think, to some degree. But if it does good, that would be one of the first good video game movies. Uh, <laughs> this is the Mortal Kombat movies. You ever see the Mortal Kombat not movies? Not good. No? No. Oh, that's just your opinion, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, Reggie, Reggie left too. That was the other Nintendo news. Yeah. Reggie left. Rip Reggie. He got replaced by a guy named Doug. Doug is now the uh, Doug the Bowser. Of, Doug Bowser is now the, the head part. of Nintendo America. That's good. That's really good PR. Is That's it? really good marketing too. Uh, yeah. I, Imagine I, he, the possibilities. He took a picture. Doug Bowser took a picture of himself. Like, thank you for the warm welcome. And he had like a Mario and Luigi tied behind him on a shelf with like a like a GameCube controller or something like in the background. Is that his real name? Doug Bowser. Yeah. That's his real name. Yeah, like if you wiki him, he has like a whole thing of like stuff he does. What ethnicity is the last name Bowser? What is what is that? I've I, never I, I heard I that last I don't, name. I don't know. What came first, the last name Bowser or the character Bowser? You're asking me like you're asking me stuff like <laughs> as if I'm on the board of directors for like this like decision. <laughs> the thing is honestly like I I don't even like I don't even uh, have a lot of Nintendo stuff myself. Mm. Like I'll play the Pokemon games every once in a while, and I'm still waiting for them to come out with Metroid Prime Four. That's that's the that's the Nintendo. Yeah, you're right a big there. Metroid fan. Uh, I gathered that. That that's it though. That's like yeah. that's my and I guess while well, Nintendo, I was thinking Monster Hunter, but like mm-hmm. since that's like Capcom, and since they put it on PlayStation Four, the recent usually they're on the 3DS and like the Wii U and all that. Mm-hmm. But since like that's not really Nintendo, Nintendo, they don't do the whole direct. Stuff I didn't like grow that. up with that much Nintendo. I'd say I had. A, I think my f- very first game console that I can remember being my own beyond like an NES, which was like my parents. I had a, a Game Boy Color, which is the one without the backlight on it. Okay. So I think that's what kind of initially got me into video games. But beyond that, I think my main console I had past that was a PlayStation 2. So I didn't play a whole lot of Nintendo games. I think the, I never, I never owned a GameCube. I had a Wii, but I barely used it. So for a lot of people, there's, I think the thing that I find bizarre is there's so many grown adults that have such a big attachment to Nintendo. And I feel like it's really, at least maybe not so much nowadays when you see, cause you see like a lot of marketing catered towards adults with the Switch. They have those like advertisements where they're on like LA rooftop parties and stuff, you know? But I feel like 
Nintendo for a long time has just catered mostly to children. So anytime I would see like, for instance, like James. James was really into Nintendo, I noticed. Yeah, right? that's, that's your point about the children. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I get what you're saying though. Yeah, so I, I, for me, I just never, I don't know. I like Nintendo games. I think they're good for everybody, but I feel like well, they, they with the Wii though, they hit like the when they hit the general market, uh -huh. like they had a huge explosion in, in net profit. Really, because yeah. they were able to get the Wii into like families' homes and not so much just one, like you said, children or two, just like very niche like uh, games that like you know only adults would pick up mm -hmm. kind of thing. So once they hit that the general market, like yeah. they they were the most bought console for mm -hmm. a bit. You know, even you know my 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 parents bought the Wii U because of the stupid, um, or sorry, the Wii because of the stupid like Fit Pad thing. Yeah, that they would like do the Wii U bowling and Wii uh, Fit yeah, and you know, Wii all, Fit. all this crazy <laughs> stuff. So that that's why I think they probably changed their direction a little bit. But also, like back in the day, even the GameCube had games that were like uh, like Super Mario Sunshine. In fact, when I was when I was buying, the, my dad actually helped me buy the GameCube. Like he bought me the GameCube, but he had this like weird. He was like a very like huge like conservative type of dude where it's like he was like you know I, he wanted me to pick out games because I guess you could buy a game with it. And mm -hmm. It was supposed to be like my birthday present or something. I'm trying to remember exactly what the stipulation was, but it came with a free game and it was a choice of either Metroid Prime mm -hmm. or Mario Sunshine. And I was a kid, obviously, and I wanted Mario Sunshine. Cause that's like where everyone had, it was Mario. I knew Mario. Yeah, of course. And he was like, he, he was totally not about it. He thought it was like a baby game and he thought it was like for like girls even for some reason. Mario? Yeah. I don't know why. Cause it was like sunshine, I think was in the name. Oh, okay. So he ended up making me play Metroid Prime. That's but funny. Then I really liked it. So it kind of worked out. That's funny. I, I had a similar situation with my dad because he really liked video games and he, he, he He's kind of the one who got me into video games growing up, but he was also sort of like the kind of macho man. Like he liked playing video games, but he only liked one genre: World War II shooters. That was the okay. only thing. So that you would have had play. like Medal of Honor. I know. Or... I played a lot of Medal of Honor. Okay. Yeah. So I think that kind of influenced why I got into PlayStation versus like Nintendo is because he when I whenever I got a console growing up when I was a kid and my parents would pay for it, they would get it with the stipulation that they would also use it. So my dad so. He wanted to play these World War II games. He wanted to play like Medal of Honor. He wanted to play Call of Duty, whatever. So that's, they didn't really have that on Nintendo consoles. You know what I mean? So that definitely played a big part for me getting into video games, but also specifically why I never got super into Nintendo, I guess. I never really took the time to reflect on that. It's kind of interesting, actually, now that I think about it. But yeah, I played a lot of World War II shooters growing up because of that. I that that a probably makes a lot of sense, which is why you went into uh, you know politics in college. And went that's to, not why I went to politics. I took so many history college. classes. You just don't want to see you know the uh, the, ger <laughs> the German Reich rise up again. <laughs> Speaking of foreign invasions, you know what you don't want invading your mouth? Bacteria and germs, which is why this week's other sponsor is Quip. One of the most important things we do for our health every day is brushing our teeth. Yet most of us don't do it properly. I mean, you can tell, just look at like some of the screenshots we've had from our videos where our teeth are glowing yellow. But thankfully, Quip is a better electric toothbrush created by dentists and designers. Quip was designed to make brushing your teeth more simple affordable and enjoyable. So Quip has a multi-use cover that mounts to your mirror and unmounts to slide over your bristles for on-the-go brushing. Why? It declutters your sink or your cabinet and makes traveling with electric toothbrush that much easier. Quip doesn't require a clunky charger and runs for three months on one charge. That's pretty good. That's, That's pretty, pretty good. good battery life. You use Quip at home. You know, a lot of people here use Quip. Uh, they've been sponsored for a long time as well. What mm -hmm. do you like about it? It's great. It's really convenient. It's I like the design of it because I'm not I'm very OCD with the designs of stuff. Quip is very like sleek. It's very nice. It yeah. comes with that little the mount that you put on your do mirror. You, do you put it on your mirror? I actually? do put it on my mirror. Yeah. Oh. Um, it's cool for traveling too because you can just stick it on. Because like if you keep your you can keep your toothbrush in like a little container. Where you, you can put it on your it. shower too if you glass. You shower. put it anywhere you want. Stick it you on there. Anywhere you want. Shower really. really you could put it in your bedroom if you want to. If you wanted to brush your teeth in your bedroom. Wait, have you ever brushed your teeth in a shower, dude? I have brushed my teeth in the it's shower. Your, it's your fork. It's your fork. Is, is fork. that your preferred way to brush? Uh, it's not my preferred way to. Well, yeah, it's kind of my preferred way. Well, to you can do yeah, that. I'm not gonna lie, dude. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You can do that with Quip for yeah. sure. 
It has a built-in two-minute timer pulse uh, every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides, helping guide a full and even clean. Up to 90% of us don't brush for a full two minutes or don't clean evenly, so this is very helpful for that. And the brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist recommended schedule every three months for just $5. In case you missed those dentist appointments where they give you like a, like, you know, 50 cent toothbrush for charging you the $1,300 appointment to tell you your, your teeth suck, uh, Quip instead will just deliver you the brush heads on a timely basis so you don't have to worry about going to the dentist and being shamed. They're backed by over 200,000 professional dentists. You know, what more can you say? I don't even know two dentists, so that's, that's, that's good enough for me. Quip starts at $25 and if you get quip.com slash CC TV right now, you get your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash CCTV. Probably should say that again. getquip.com slash CCTV. Thanks, Quip. Uh, before we started this epic Two White Guys podcast, um, not just white, <laughs> we went on Twitter the place where all people that like to have rational discussions go uh, to ask you guys, to ask us questions. And I thought we'd take some time to answer some of the most hot pressing things that people wanna know. Don't read the troll, actually no, do read the trolley ones first. Hold on, I was gonna talk about this uh, one segment where uh, oh. An Anthem, Anthem did worse in sales than Mass Effect Andromeda. I didn't play it, I don't wanna play it. Okay, that's, that's that segment, sorry um, EA. All right, let's take some questions from Twitter. Love this, love, love, love taking questions from Twitter. I'm not gonna read the stupid ones like this SpongeBob meme that someone said. Uh, why do neither of you know how to spell Alex, says Annie. We don't choose our names, okay? Ask our parents. Okay, uh, <laughs> Doggo with Bragg. I, see, this is why I hate to, just put your real names. What's your least favorite CC video to date? Wait, oh, they said, what's your least favorite? Uh, probably the one, well, my personally, probably the one where we uh, talked about why we had to fire somebody. That wasn't a very, uh, su a super good episode. Um, I don't know what yours is. Probably, Are they talking about just- Your least favorite In terms CC of watching video. it or in terms of being a part of it? What do you, you wanna do both, I guess? I guess you could do either one. The one that I've, least liked personally. Um, uh, hmm. It's hard to be a part of. I think definitely to be a part of was that Assassin's Creed video that we did. That was one of the first times that I was on camera. That was your least favorite one? Truly to be a part of, yeah. I had okay. no idea what we were doing. I had no idea how to make it interesting. That was one of the first times I was on the couch. Wasn't very comfortable on camera. It was painful. It was hard for me. Okay, dude. That was like one of the, that, was, that was one of the videos I had planned. So you telling me this now is kind of like it's not the, it's not the, it's not your fault for planning it. Oh, it, it is just, my fault. If it was a video that made you uncomfortable and that was your least favorite one to be in, that sounds like it's directly my fault. You know what I mean? Well, that's because that, that was when I was first starting out here. Oh. So I didn't really know how to add to that. Yeah. It was, it was uncomfortable for me, not because you did anything wrong, just because I didn't know what to add to it. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna move on here. <laughs> So uh, I swear. Easty Bug says, in all of CC, who would you have, uh, how does they spell that? Who would have what role in a zombie apocalypse and who would die first? What do you think you would be doing? What would I be doing? The, so they're, they're saying that we are like a, like a conglomerate group that ended up being, so like if the zombie apocalypse struck while we were at a work day, mm -hmm and we couldn't leave. Okay. Hmm. Brad would be the overzealous leader that would probably instantly die first. Like he would probably go through like a subway system door uh, and probably get like picked off by like five zombies, you know, and fight them all. But I'm guessing he would probably be like the one of the first to die. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think I would probably run away from the camp. You wouldn't want to be, where would you go? <laughs> I, I don't know, just south. Where it's nice and warm. South. <laughs> yeah, because like in the zombie movies, they all like they all burn up. Uh huh. Lindsay would. I think Lindsay would be fine. Lindsay, what do you think you'd do in a zombie apocalypse? What would your role be? Uh, I'd probably die pretty quickly. 
You think you'd die pretty quickly? Well, I think we would I all die. I think Lucy's resourceful enough that she wouldn't die quickly. That's my hot take. I think we would- Maybe I would survive a little bit longer, maybe you're right. Matt would definitely survive. Yeah, Matt would survive. Matt would, yeah, Matt, like, Matt actually- Crappy. Like, if Matt told me that he survived a zombie invasion, I'd be like, yeah, I believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I'd be like one of the researchers mm -hmm. in the lab coats who's trying to figure out the cure. Yeah. I think that would be my role. Okay. Jacob, I think, would die as a meme. Do you know what I mean? I think he would willingly sacrifice like, himself. Like, he'd be like, oh, oh, watch me get bit. And then he'd actually get bit and be like, what the fuck, I got bit. And that would be like, that would be it for Jacob. Probably. Do you know what I mean? That does, sound, about, it. That does sound accurate, yeah. Uh, t Tony and John, would just, they'd kill us, probably, I think. Honestly, they just... <laughs> They'd cannibalize just, they'd just us. Fucking shoot, they'd shoot us as soon as we get any loot and then they'd be surviving. It'd just be the two of them to join a rebel gang. I want to look at some of these questions too. Okay. Uh, Jesus. Oh, well, this one's for you specifically. Someone said, how, Alec, how did you feel joining Couch Up? What's your favorite series so far that you're a part of? And is there any ideas you want happening at Couch Up, good or bad ideas? How did I feel going in? Mm -hmm. uh, nervous? <laughs> Mostly. I... It's, it's different when you go into a job uh, without really any knowledge of the group going in, but like I knew of you guys. It wasn't like I was a huge fan or something, but I knew of you guys' work. Um, so yeah, I was really nervous going in. Also paired with the fact that I hadn't really been on camera very much before. Well, here's the thing. I was hired as a production yeah, assistant. Like, this is a three part question. I, Sorry. I didn't know you were going to like a diatribe. Like, Sorry. Like a, I was hired as a production assistant and I was never told that I was going to be on camera. So being on camera was kind of a surprise to me, but I wanted to make sure I did a good job. So it, it did give me a lot of anxiety for a while. And I think I've talked about this before on a different, um, different CCTV, but I was still excited too. I thought it was a cool opportunity. You could be part of a YouTube group. That's pretty cool. You know? mm -hmm. um, my favorite series that I had been a part of so far. Ooh. Um, I don't really know what series just, just is say all, I just say all, all of them. them. I love all of them. They're is, all is so Is there good. any ideas you want happen? They said happen at Couch Up. Like for videos or just like structurally? Or sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, well... I'd say video probably ideas. I don't think they want to know like if you'd restructure like the finance, you know. Um, video ideas? I just want to do some weird stuff. What does that mean though? I want to do some really bizarre things. I feel like, I think, I think the video that we're doing today. Yeah. Uh, you'll see what's going to happen with that. Okay. But uh, definitely, uh, I don't want to really spoil anything <laughs> for sure, but there, there will definitely be some stuff that I'll bring soon for sure. Thank you for the question. Uh, do you enjoy what you currently do? What would you like to do differently if you had time and resources? I feel like we have time and resources. I don't think there's that much different things we could do. I personally um, currently do, I guess, yeah. Like what, what else would, I, I don't know what else I would do. Again, this is a question that's probably meant for a broader mm -hmm. uh, group of people, but I guess it could bounce back to you. Do you enjoy what you do? And what yeah. would you do differently if you had time and resources? Um, I do enjoy what I do. I don't know what I would do differently, really. I think that the operation's running. I think the only thing I would do differently is maybe put in more time for my own stuff, but I don't, in terms of couch up, I think that we're, it's running pretty much as efficiently as it can. Oh, God, some of these questions, like I, I have to skip so many, like what, <laughs> who's the hottest person in the warehouse? Why do I look like a peach? How many inches is your meat specter or scepter, sorry? Uh, when are you getting married? Have you seen Joe's baby? Why is Alec on the Ellen show? Um, like really wasn't expecting this level of just awfulness. How do you feel about the whole Adpocalypse 2.0 going on? 2.0 going on right now. Uh, is it as big deal as some are making it? I don't know, man. It's it's weird. I think I don't know how much you know about the Adpocalypse. Do you even know about the Adpocalypse 1.0? You haven't even been around that long. Truly, no. <laughs> I don't think I'm even really in it right now because this is not my own channel. You guys are mostly dealing with the business side of it. I like that approach of things like, hey, I don't have to deal with it though. I don't, I don't. If, if the videos aren't making money or if the ads aren't being put on videos, that's not really my... You wanna keep getting paid, don't you? 
I do want to get keep, I, I do want to keep getting paid. Mm -hmm. I do. So I guess it does. So if ads me. are bad, you won't get paid as much. I just don't have any. I don't have any input to give as to like like a standard to compare it to prior because I wasn't in this prior, so I have no idea. Oh, okay. So you would have more to add to that for sure. It's just if it, if it was if the ads were good, you'd be getting paid more. Is the way you'd have to look at it. Would it be? Yeah. Like everyone okay. would be. Okay. Well, then I do care. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't have much input to give to it as to like I, I don't know I'm not I haven't been in this very long so I don't know YouTube YouTube came out with some tweets recently and I I, I personally talked about this on my stream enough so I'm I'm wasting air here at this point it sucks uh, obviously because you don't really know what they're targeting specifically people have tagged us on Twitter a lot this week because YouTube was responding to some uh, 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 some mother about why her videos were getting demonetized because of her comment section because I think people were posting inappropriate comments on her daughter's videos that she herself was moderating to so she wasn't even letting just free comments go she was moderating the comments but YouTube thought they were still bad enough even the moderated ones that they decided to pull ads from her and then when she was asking why they responded with because the comments section is bad and some videos will notice them being demonetized because of the comments so people were saying to us like will this affect you because our comments section i mean i'm just reading these twitter responses you can get a general gist that our comments section is like not the best um but it sucks that if, if that's the true then there's a chance youtube will also pull ads because your comment section sucks I heard about that. I yeah. did hear about that. Well, you can add input on it if you heard about that. I'm not... Well, what I heard before... I don't know about the whole story you had, you, you were saying, but the, what I heard was that YouTube was demonetizing videos, or they said that your video can potentially be demonetized, depending mm -hmm. on the comment section. Right. But they didn't really... I don't know if they specified exactly what they mean when they say inappropriate. Because, no, they don't specify. Because I, I thought that whole thing came about because of the whole CP issue that was going yes. on. I figured that inappropriate meant potentially predatory, or something like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like trolley comments or it, well the, I, I just don't i has there been a case where somebody's comment section has gotten them demonetized so far when their comment section was mostly just trolley it's well how do you first of all how do you draw a line besides that that is yeah we don't know how many cases there because because it's so fresh the the mother one was the most viral one because youtube directly responded to it mm -hmm. but there could be other cases and we just don't know just so the the impression that i got from that was that inappropriate meant predatory mostly or violent okay. in some way i just don't i'm not sure i guess until but, there but is, again like how do you like if somebody calls me thick like oh i'd like a th slice the thick mm -hmm. piece off this boy uh, do you know what I mean? Like, is that trolling or is that now getting into like, you know, the realm of whatever? What do you feel, what do you feel would be a proper solution to that though, is my question. Let, let people moderate their own comments, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And if they don't, and if they're, you know, uh, allowing a space for their children to be attacked, you know, by say predators, then I, then I would say you can go after the channel. But just because people are, cause you could just mass flag things, you know? Like you could all pull into a channel and just like type in a bunch of stuff. Now all of a sudden that channel is like getting demonetized. That mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. So I'd say ban ban the predatory stuff, obviously, right? But again, even that's like pretty, how do you define that? Like they'd have to really have a, a bunch of investigative stuff going on. And the problem with YouTube is they don't even know how to do that because half of the time these issues are popping up under YouTube's nose. There'll be just like some YouTuber that comes out and exposes YouTube and all of a sudden they're gonna be like, well, we're gonna crack down on this now. I was in tweet out a GIF where I'm like, every time there's a problem, YouTube, you know, this is YouTube's response. And it was gonna be that gift from um, the day after tomorrow where the whole city gets hit by like a giant tsunami. And my joke was that, hey, there's a fire in the building and then it, YouTube and sends a giant tsunami like destroy the entire city. That's kind of like how I see YouTube. Yeah, I guess, I guess from their perspective, it is, I mean, when you have, when you have a platform with literally millions to even billions of people on it, it is, you do sometimes have to go kind of scorched earth on some of the methods because there is no way to individually monitor everything, I guess. There is no pleasing everyone, truly, especially with that big of a crowd. But yeah, no, they definitely have taken some wrong approaches with stuff for sure, but don't know what the right answer is. I don't have, an, I don't know what the right answer we're is. We're still surviving, guys. We're, we're still here, not for a long time, but for a good time. What inspired Jacob to come back onto camera? <laughs> uh, lack of people. He's gonna ask to cut this out. <laughs> lack of people. And I asked him, and that inspired him to be there because no one else was there. So shout out to Jacob 
for being a team player. We'd like to see him more on camera with you having those hot sessions, you know? Yeah. That was, that was cool, dude. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> What's your favorite part about being in Couch Hop? And if you could live anywhere, where would it be? I'm only, by the way, picking out the nicest comments. I skipped about 60 <laughs> tweets to get to this one. So we're going to leave it at this last comment. What's your favorite part about Couch Hop? And if you could live anywhere, where would it be? Favorite part about Couch Hop is <laughs> definitely being able to say that I work somewhere where you can be creative and have people see that, I guess, have it be shown, you know, cause you can be creative in any job really, I guess, if you're, even if you're working in an office job, you can be creative, but to do you be doing something that a people can enjoy and that people can visually see, I think it, it does feel very rewarding, especially in comparison to where I was working before. I was just, I was just, I was just a tutor, you know, um, if I could live anywhere, Probably Prague in the Czech Republic. It's a beautiful Prague. city. Prague. It's a beautiful city. Okay. Yeah, it's nice, calm. Or I'd like to have a farm somewhere quiet. <laughs> okay. Prague, okay. Uh, I'll tell you something right now. My favorite part is not having some corporate overlord screaming down at me. You know, having a business with, with a business uh, with people that uh, are, are all very cool, very nice, very friendly. Everyone that works at the warehouse is, is, is fun to be around. Um, just in general, love, love that, you know. Uh, cool that we have a space out here in this like giant growing industry of entertainment uh, and then we can chill. And again, we don't have to sign up for anything and, and go to, you know, we, we don't have to sell out that hard as a result just to stay to stay afloat yeah it's my probably probably my favorite part uh about everything uh although if i could live anywhere i don't think it would be los angeles although actually hold on i want to kind of retract that malibu is awesome there's sections of malibu that are really really awesome and if i could like if i if i could focus down on just those areas and then be able to pick certain restaurants and stores and just sort of congregate them loosely around an area in Malibu, I'd probably prefer that. Yeah. But because that doesn't exist, I'll have to go to somewhere like, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. I, I thought about like uh, Norway not too long ago. Norway. But that would also be like, a, I want a house with like, uh, you know, one gig internet. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. And like Postmates. <laughs> I get you. Oh, dude, maybe, maybe yeah. someday. Well. That's, I think this is it for us. Uh, we enjoyed our little stay here at this. I'm not really sure what to call this, honestly. They advertise this as a castle. We've been using peer space a lot uh, for our bookings. If you guys have ideas on places where we can go or sites we can use besides that, that's cool too, let us know. Uh, but so far, lots of people have given us a place to film in and it's been, it's been pretty funny, uh, I will say. But thank you, Alec, for being here. Thank you, Alexander. Good night, dude. Uh, shout out to everyone watching the CCTV, the Two Guys podcast, uh, bi bi weekly, every every week, every other week. Sorry, we're here telling you about culture news, what's going on uh, in the media and uh, the gaming industry, and we'll we'll see you next time on another episode of CCTV. Bye. Peace. Hello, I'm Olivia Newton-John and I've got something to show you. <laughs> <laughs>